Scars of Ether is a two-player post-apocalyptic skirmish game with heavy emphasis on resource management and plays in an hour or less. You and your opponent will take on the role of scavengers for your respective clans, fighting for control over ether crystals. Push your scavengers to their limits, summon ancient constructs, and survive the ether storm that rages around you with this tight health-as-action economy system. Only the strongest of will and cunning survive. Here we have a game in action. It's Yellow's turn and their leader has recently been under heavy attack. They get to activate a scavenger and an ether construct each turn, so they decide to use their arc snipers in order to attack the opponent's mage knight. The arc sniper's long range excels at applying pressure in multiple parts of the battlefield, and they're worried that the opponent wants to use their mage knight to deal critical damage against their leader. Notice how the arc snipers exhaust one of their healthiest units in order to take their action. Then the Mage Knight receives the damage against one of their weakest units on their own stamina track. Taking actions and receiving damage moves your units downwards towards their inevitable death. After the Arc Snipers have shot the Mage Knights, the Mage Knights are immediately allowed to move, exhausting a unit as normal. The Mage Knights are worried about losing more units, so they try to run away. The other player pushes forward and attacks again. The Mage Knight, desperate to escape, decides to run headfirst into the Aether Storm. While it's not safe to stay in the storm for long, they are able to use it for cover as a temporary solution. The Yellow player then activates their leader, an Aether Construct built to guide them through the storm, and runs away. Now that they have activated a Scavenger and an Aether Construct, they decide to finish their turn, allowing them to heal their army. Scars of Ether is all about asking the question, how far do you want to push? Players are given the opportunity to take an impressive amount of actions each turn, but as they do, their fighters become easier to kill. The majority of playtesters have found the fatigue system to be intuitive after the first round or two, and end the game knowing what strategies they can improve upon. As players summon constructs to increase their army size, the Aether Storms quickly arrive. This presents a natural complexity curve that keeps pace with the players as they navigate simple new twists in the combat puzzle. Scars of Ether resonates with two main audiences. The primary audience is the player who enjoys exploring the strategy and tactics of the wargaming genre. This includes fans of games such as Fire Emblem, XCOM, and the Undaunted series. They enjoy taking strategies they've learned from previous games in new directions in order to test their skills as a commander. The secondary audience enjoys medium weight games that invite depth within its layered complexities, spending time with the gaming group or partner talking over the nuances of the system's interactions. They are a fan of titles such as Root or Scythe, with games such as Wingspan being their favorite to show to their newer friends. They prefer to delve into mechanical puzzles, finding ways to act more efficiently than their opponents, enjoy having to adapt their tactics on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. It addresses all of my problems with dudes on a map games. The system is elegant and I love getting right to the conflict. I keep comparing this to Fire Emblem because that's what I grew up on. This game has a phenomenal grasp on interesting team compositions. I usually dislike dudes on a map games, but this innovative fatigue system really pulled me in. Thank you, and I hope you have a lovely day.